Hello everyone. Today I offer you to consider prototyping as a risk mitigation tool. My name is Ivan Klivakichev and I am game designer. Uh, since 2004 uh, I've been making video games for about uh, 19 years. Um, I was uh, involved in the development of such PC titles as uh, Blitzkrieg, Heroes of Might and Magic 5, and so on. In 2011, I switched to mobile game development. And since last year, I've been running my own YouTube channel, Pro Game Dev, welcome. But enough about me. Let's go back to prototyping. So, many developers know about prototyping, and I hope actively use it in game development. Are there such people in this room? Please raise your hand. Don't be shy. Oh, nice. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. But are you completely sure that you, you are using this method correctly? Let's try to figure this out together. To begin with, we will define prototyping. A prototype is an early sample built to test a concept or process. Yeah. For example, we need to make sure that our engine will work well with one, one billion units on one screen. Yeah. We don't need to build a, a final build with with final graphics. We can make a, a prototype with placeholders, not even from our games, but paying attention only to the numbers of polygons in the frame. Yeah, another example. Uh, when we choosing a visual style for a future game, we don't need to create the amount of content or of whole content. It is enough to compare two pictures in different art styles. It's enough to compare two pictures in two different art styles and uh, decide which graphic attracts users more. And of course, gameplay prototypes, yeah? Which can be made in as a board game from hastily cut cards of common paper, of course. A prototype is a tool for testing hypothesis. The main is a tool. It's a very, very important definition. I would like to carefully to apply it on your prototyping experience, and maybe some problems that you had with prototypes will immediately become clearer. Like any tool, you need to know how to use it. And uh, before you start using prototyping, I recommend doing some preparatory steps. Step one, uh, you need to put forward a hypothesis that you plan to test. Write it down, it's very impossible, and make sure there are no misunderstandings. Then, step two, decide of the conditions of the test. What will you measure? Uh, how? And uh, what the indicators of success? Of course, write it down again, and again, make sure there are no misunderstandings on this step. Only then you should start prototyping. Uh, let me repeat my main idea, but uh, this time in slightly different words. I think this is extremely important. The prototype is not something self-sufficient. This is a just a step on a long journey. The main objective of the prototype is to save time and resources, to speed up the search of the right way. Instead of running into a dead end for a long time, the prototype allows you to know, is the dead end in, the, in this way, or it is possible to pass here. This is the main goal, to answer the question. Is there a dead end, or, oh sorry, <laughs> Prototyping is an important process that is applied in any phases of game development. Of course, prototyping the greatest popularity due to the pre-production phase. After all, after it all, at this stage, the developers usually check the maximum number of hypotheses per unit of time. However, this does not mean at all that prototyping can be used 
cannot be used at the other stages. During production, developers also regularly face dilemmas that need to be quickly found. For example, which battle mode we take into implementation and which one we leave in the backlog now. Yeah? And of course, with release of the game, questions uh, about how to continue the developing this game don't disappear, and again, prototyping can help you. An example, Hearthstone Tavern Brawl mod, yeah? where developers can test any crazy hypothesis for introducing new mechanic into the game. However, not everything is as good as it might seem. Unfortunately, sometimes prototyping may not be effective. You spend time and effort and on a prototype, but the answers are not found. This is really disappointing. Of course, it is impossible to completely avoid errors, but you can try to reduce their chances. As I said, prototyping should start with preparation. We can look at the problem on a large scale and, first of all, formulate a problem which we need to be solved. Uh, then uh, we need to put forward a hypothesis that solves this problem with verification criteria, of course. And only after that you can take on the prototype to test a hypothesis. As you might guess, each of these problems can have a number of problems, each of these points, of course. It is possible to make a mistake with the initial goal, and then all subsequent efforts will be obviously be in vain. It is also possible to make a mistake and incorrect prototype. And finally, the hypothesis itself may turn out to be wrong. Let's deal with each point in more detail. The first type of common mistake is a wrong goal. There are many different goal settings methods. You can use whatever you like. Personally, I use SMART. Specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. Maybe you know about it. Uh, and in prototyping, for me, it's critically to at least be specific. What problem do you want to solve? Then, relevant. Is solving this problem really important? And will solving this problem help you in your product? And finally, measurable. What metrics and values you use to evaluate success? Let me uh, better explain uh, this SMART method with a couple examples. So, what a typical goal statement look like? You may say, I have a great idea, let's do it quickly, it will be good. Yes, and I'm not trying to say that this is a, not the way to set a goal, but I think that to increase the chance of success is uh, better to use something like this. Uh, check the presence of fun. It's a specific, measurable NPS, net promoted score, is greater than seven, for example. Attainable. I have a necessary experience because I'm a skilled uh, game designer. Uh, relevant, yes, this is exactly the kind of gameplay we would look to offer to our users. There is nothing like it on the market and time bound one month. Another example is not from pre-production, but from production. Uh, for, I saw cool mechanic, we need it in our game too. Mm -hmm. Pixonic, okay. I think it sounds familiar, yeah? Uh, and let's see this design according to SMART. Specific, we need add mechanic to the game to increase profit. And measurable, expected LTV day 90, for example, grow of 10%. Then attainable, we have a proven gameplay that is good. Relevance, we believe that players need new activities, so adding new mechanic, uh, is what is needed now, and time-bound for months, for example. I think it's clear. The second type of common mistake is the wrong prototype. Let's start with the situation which we mentioned earlier. The hypothesis was not properly prepared or not put forward. This may seem strange to someone, but in practice this situation is quite common. 
Next problem. Problems with analytics and statistics. Yeah, you hear about it before me. Perhaps the measurement method, method were not chosen correctly, or analytics were not audited at all, or that me me method that sounds good in mind, uh, worst bet in practice. And third situation, the result obtained not answer the question. It is possible, unfortunately. I repeat, you need clearly understand to desire it KPI, which be agreed and, and fixed in advance. And uh, another important point. To all the above, it is also worth adding uh, that is important to uh, confuse concept, prototype, and demo version. A concept is a tool for declaring hypothesis. You have come up with something and want to tell the world about it, use a concept. A prototype is a tool for testing a hypothesis. You need to quickly make sure that your idea works, use the prototypes. And demo version is a tool for demonstrating confirmed hypothesis. You need to show everyone that your idea works, make a demo. And now a reasonable question may arise. Why not use uh, a prototype to demonstrate or a demo version to check? The main advantage of prototype is its cheapness. So much will be sacrifices for the sake of speed. No need to show the half of the work and vice versa. If you only need to check a hypothesis, you don't need to make an expensive demo. That is difficult to change, and it is pity to throw it away if the hypothesis does not justify itself. Returning to common prototyping mistakes. Let's look at the third type of common mistakes is the wrong hypothesis. That unfortunately happens too. It seems that everything was done correctly, but the laid down KPI was not achieved. At this point, if the criteria were not formulated clearly enough or not written down, the author of the hypothesis is often asked to start looking at uh, other parameters to interpret the data in different way and in general to consider new values as success. It was uh, in order to avoid such situation that I said, to approve everything and write it down. It is very, very important. But uh, let's say that everything is fine with you. Everyone agrees that initial hypothesis is simply not true. That's next. Of course, first of all, don't get upset. To make a mistake with a hypothesis is absolutely normal. You need to put forward a following hypo hypothesis and test it again and maybe again and again, I don't know. Keep expanding your own experience to increase the chances to, of putting forward a correct hypothesis. And uh, don't forget to use someone uh, else's expertise. Analyze applied solution in other products. Participate in experience exchange event like this. And uh, if possible, attract the best specialist to yourself, speed. Speed is one of the key parameters in prototyping. There are usually a lot of hypotheses, and in it, it's physically impossible to check them all. And unfortunately, hypotheses are often wrong. There are fewer paths to success than to failure. That is why you need to, to be able to test as many hypotheses as possible. And that is why you need to make the prototype as cheap as possible. Take every opportunity to cut costs. It's very, very important. Prototyping is iterative, and you should be able to make quick fixes in any moments. Well, if nothing helps and uh, your chosen path is completely dead end, you should not be sorry to throw everything that you managed to do into the trash. So let's sum up. Use prototyping. This is a very powerful and efficient tool, but it's a only tool. It's a, not a magic 
use prototyping as intended to quickly test a hypothesis. And finally, use prototyping the right way. Don't forget about the prep work and you know <clears throat> how you will measure the success. Thank you for your attention. I hope Thank my you. little tips will help you to use prototyping even more effectively.